Hey guys, it's Tom Box here. Now, before I get into this video, I want to share with you guys my holiday gift of the season, and it's free! Special thanks to all the Patreons who've been supporting me and getting me some time to actually work on this stuff and requesting the proxies. This time, the proxies that we are sharing as a full sheet will be the Link Vrains 2 proxies of all the Link monsters available from your Six Sam, your Trap Tricks, your Magical Muskets, Condemn Witch. All of them are available on a 9x9 sheet that you can print out and they will be perfectly sized for fitting into a sleeve and getting some practice done. So there you go guys, that's my holiday gift for you guys and huge shout out to Keith, my most recent Patreon. Love you all for supporting this channel. And uh, for a printing recommendation, I recommend going to get a laser printer and print it out or go to like a Staples or something and using their laser printers. Cost you a couple of cents really. Uh, and they produce the best results. That's it for this holiday gift. Let's go into the deck profile. So let's recap what happened to Madolce. First of all, MX Saber Invoker got banned and we have to cut out Brilliant Fusion now because we have to go into Sistart rather than Mrs. Radiant. Mainly because of the new Medulce, kind of limits you to only summoning Medulce monsters. Now, the biggest problems previously was that A, Magiline does not start a combo by herself. She needs to pair off with additional summons, like a double summon. And two, there are no quick ways to access Anjali. So that became a huge problem. And three, it dies to basically any hand trap. So that was key problems. However, with the release of Pudding Cessor, it feels like a lot of this has been answered. In terms of tier rating, I think this deck kind of fits in the category of Cyber Dragons, where it is a rogue deck that can definitely take the top spots of various metas, because this deck is very good at breaking boards and has a solid OTK. And board breaking wise, TR Misu is known to have some of the best board removal of non-targeting card shuffling back into the deck. So overall, it's going to be a very powerful stuff. And there are combos where you can execute by putting out two TR Misus and shuffling four cards back in, which is ridiculous. So let's go into the profile and show you guys some combos. Now, this is a proxy profile. So if you guys can count out how many proxies I've used, then that will tell me that you guys have extremely keen eyes. So starting off with Madolce Pudding Cessor. Now, Pudding Cessor is the one card to fix up most of the opening play problems that we mentioned previously where you could die to Ash, maybe Magellan's not starting play, and you know, there's no quick access to Anjali. This card solves all that, mainly because, first of all, it's a fairy type, it's level four, it's already super beneficial as a Madolce monster. It hits all the good notes. Now, if this card is in your hand, and you have no monsters in your graveyard, you can activate this card, so it's an activated special summon to special summon out this card from your hand. That doesn't restrict you onto anything just yet. However, the second effect does restrict you into only summoning Madolce monsters for the rest of the turn, which is if this card is special summon, you can special summon out a Madolce monster from your hand or deck and you reduce this level by one. This lets you fetch out basically any of your Madolce monster, turning this into a tour guide with a bit of a BA summoning condition as well. Overall, that's going to be amazing because you're going to get multiple monsters. And that also fixes up Magiline. Because if you open Magiline, you normal summon Magiline, add this card to your hand, you get another extension right away. And you can even bait out your opponent's Ash Blossom Joy Springs by summoning out Magiline. If they Ash it, then you can use Pudding Cessor and summon out more stuff. Overall, uh, you burn their Ash Blossom Joy Spring. And if you they have too many hand traps, you can even continue to even run uh, Call by the Grave because Call by the Grave wasn't previously available. So you are able to burn out Ash Blossom Joy Strings and you are able to continue to make your board, which is very fun. And the board that they, this deck can make is a little bit annoying, but it's not like unbearably like difficult to beat. But yes, this is this card right here. And if you summon this card out from Ticket, you will be able to special summon even more cards out. So you just wall off, very defensive if you want to choose to be defensive. Then we have, uh, let's go with Anjali first. So Anjali is the other opening play because you can go Anjali into Pudding Cessor to get that Hoot Kick. Anjali, of course, is just a really good, uh, combo piece that you can use for hoot cake you can use for basically anything that you need to fetch out you can even go into pudding sessor now so you actually have multiple targets occasionally you could go into um what's his face messenger lotto if you already have a beast and you need something that cannot be destroyed by battle a lot of people forget that whatever the angeli summons cannot be destroyed by battle and they also forget that the card needs to be put back into the deck or shuffled back into the hand at the end so yeah angeli is amazing Magellan now is no longer a dead card. Your key search now is going to be the Pudding Cessor because Pudding Cessor is just a free play for you. And if you're able to call by the grave your opponent's Ash Blossom along the way, it's just going to be amazing. Oh, so yeah, you're no longer a dead card in the opening turn and you do not require the double summon anymore to get the play going. Triple Hoot Cake because Hoot Cake is again another extender which summons out from the deck. 
And because you can summon out from the deck, you can just usually fetch out Messenger Law to fetch yourself that ticket. And you can also get into the Anjali if you're going in that direction. A pair of Messenger Lotto, these are your Garnets. Luckily now you don't actually have to run Brilliant Fusion so you don't have Garnets. But this card can be summoned from hand thanks to the Pudding Cessor. And if you have the Beast already on the board, then you can get that Surge, which is still pretty lovely. But if you open double Messenger Lotto, it does feel really bad, not gonna lie. And there's a, a one ofs, our one ofs, we have one Medulce Pudding Cess and one Medulce Mewfoy. Mewfoy is your OTK extender. You could use this card to get the double TR Misu play, which I think is amazing. I'm considering running an additional copy of this just because I need the extra body to do it with uh, with the extra card. But Pudding Cess, very useful for board removal and because you can lower her level to four thanks to Pudding Cessor's effect where if anything that she summons out lowers the level, you can even use her to go into TR Misu and then you can go into Chuckle a la mode if you're going in that direction. Yeah, that's kind of funny how you can use uh, Pudding Cessor to kind of get to the Chuckle a la mode. And then we have our hand traps, Ash Blossom Joy Spring. It's just generic hand trap. You need this card because it's the best synergy interrupter. Now I'm running Kaijus in the main deck because uh, there are a lot of problems. If you're dealing with Sky Strikers, uh, throwing them a Kaiju turns off all their back row and that's it. You can just get a free board and you're not really afraid of anything anymore because if they don't have enough, they can't activate the Widow Anchor so they're left with the Impermanence. And if they can't Impermanence your entire uh, combo, uh, you're good to go and they have the answer to their own kaiju. That's it for the monsters. For spells, we have double chateau. Sometimes you go chateau into chateau if you need to uh, uh, trigger off the queen Tiaramisu. That's only in those odd situations, but of course this does boost you by 500 attack. And remember, if you have this card on the field, anytime you shuffle a monster back in, you can add it back to your head instead. And Ticket will still go off. And speaking of Ticket, double Ticket. You can even consider triple Ticket because Ticket will all open up like so many plays when you do the tr misu uh bounce two cards if you have ticket you get to summon another monster onto the field which is very lovely and uh this is very hard to destroy on the first opening turn uh your opponent needs a very specific opening to kind of clear it out as for other spells i have double chalice because i want to turn off monsters and i want some stuff that i can use in the damage step so that's why there's there's that turning off effects is pretty important i'm using it basically like in another impermanence where i can already have cards and use impermanence rather than using veiler triple cobble the grave because i want to turn off my opponent's uh hand traps and potentially negate something that's already on the on the board uh twin twisters this is just a fun options i guess it's not exactly the most ideal but sometimes they have too many back row and you just want to empty them out you can switch it out for something else one Upstar Goblin and one Monster Reborn. And that makes up for my entire spell lineup. As for my traps, I have Triple Impermanence because Impermanence is great. And I'm playing Strikes because the opening board that Dolce establishes isn't as good as before. Where I guess before it was focused on the OTK. Now I think I want to make sure that my opponent can't break it because if they try to break it and fail, they will get OTK'd. So that's the, I suppose, the main deck. Let's go into the extra deck. So starting off with the extra deck, let's talk about the queen herself. We have triple queen Tiaramisu. Of course, shout outs to my fiance. This is her deck. She kept all her Medulce stuff. That's why I can even do this deck profile. And I think you know the holidays, you know, desserts, makes sense, the theme. Tiaramisu, um, best board remover in the game, potentially. I guess Trish is, she's up there with Trish. If you can spend two cards back into the deck, non-targeting, that is amazing and combo with the ticket you just get a lot of pushing power with this particular card and then we have the other monsters we have two Medulce fresh dish sorry you have to dedicate like a third of your extra deck to the Medulce cards thanks to uh, Pudding Cessor locking you into only playing uh, Medulce cards so you need that much space she is quite important for the opening play which I'll show you in a bit I'm right now playing two Mrs. Radiant, however, I want to cut one right now for um, Medulce uh, Chocolate a la Mode because you can use uh, Queen, you can make Tiarami Sue with that, and then you can actually open it on top, and then you'll have the Pudding Cessor so you can get that free summon. That's why I kind of want to cut one, and you're not likely to go into her unless you want the damage boost, but this is mainly for OTK purposes and pushing for damage. If you're going to go into time, you can go into this and you can use the other cards to really just push forward. As for Link Monsters, one Levier to revive 
perhaps banish targets because who kicks will always banish like Anjali or something and that's for the revival utility for uh, blowing up the board you have a lot of level fours you can blow up the board if you really can't handle the board or if your opponent overcommitted, then you can go into this which is great and then another card would be abyss dweller um, Mainly, you would go into this to turn off your opponent's graveyard effects, but on top of turning off the graveyard effects, you have the option to detach something. Because sometimes you have a monster that can't detach, and that really sucks for you, because the inability to detach makes it so that Tiaramisu won't have a material to spin cards. And you want to spin cards and getting that perfect destruction with the Dweller. And then we have Gagaga Samurai. This is just a bit of a fun card uh, to push for a lot of damage because it's earth-based and Ra Mrs. Radiant's also earth, but you can also detach, so this is a damage pusher. Pushing this with um, t uh, Mrs. Radiant gets you a ton of damage, like about 48's worth of damage. So yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of the good old zoo days. And then I'm also playing one Heartland Draco because I need a direct attacker for when I need to uh, go into time. And she's also earth, so it pairs well with the... Uh, the Mrs. Radiant as well, so that's kind of a fun thing. As for the remaining Link utility, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Unicorn, and one Boral Sword, you're very unlikely to go into these. The only way that you would go into these is that you locked uh, your opponent out on their own turn. Say you activated the Pudding Cessor on your opponent's turn thanks to them trying to break your board and fail, and the ticket went off, summon up Pudding Cess, then you have a ton of materials. And if you think you can go with the Boral Sword kill, go for it. Or you can go for the Unicorn remove the threat, go for it. Then you can make your uh, your regular play. So yeah, that's uh, that would actually make up the entire extra deck. So let's take a look at some combos. For the first combo, we have going first. And going first, these cards are not most ideal. I guess Call by the Grove is pretty good, but Strike, I like guess a good follow-up. But overall, these two are not very useful, and this is just to illustrate like a random hand. Uh, starting off with the Magiline Summon. If the combo is successful, you'll be able to search out uh, on the normal, the Pudding Cessor. Once you add the Pudding Cessor, everything else is gonna go perfectly. So you're gonna activate the Pudding Cessor, special summon it into a zone. It doesn't really matter for her. I guess you should summon it into a zone where an arrow could potentially point to. So I'm gonna summon her out over here. And over here, you're gonna activate her effect to summon out uh, Madolce Angeli. And you can summon out Angeli right here. Effect of Angeli, you can tribute her. And then you can summon out the Who Kick. I put Who Kick in defense mode because it cannot be destroyed by battle. And since you can't battle anyway, might as well have the biggest wall possible, which is cool. Let me just move these cards back out for a second because I'm going to start using these zones. And then you can activate Who Kick, banish the Angeli. And then we're going to get ourselves a, a Messengelato from the deck. And with Messengelato effect, because we have Who Kick, we're going to add ourselves the ticket. This is our current hand. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards from the one Magellan. That's why Magellan is uh, pretty crazy good right now. So we're gonna activate that ticket, and then we're going to link off the Magellan and the Messenger Auto into the graveyard, and we're going to put onto the board a Sistart right there, where she's pointing to. Why? Because if she's pointing to any of the Madolce monsters, the ticket cannot be targeted by card effects and cannot be destroyed by card effects, which makes it very annoying. And if anyone tries to destroy her by battle or card effect, you get to shuffle in your cards. And with a fairy monster available, you get to summon, you activate ticket. So what would transpire is that I would probably set like a couple cards, probably set all of these, and it becomes a little bit more annoying for your opponent. But if they try to like battle this, what would likely happen is that I'm going to activate this, or if they kill this, because this is not protected by anything. If this is just to bait them in attack mode, if they destroy this, Ticket will activate, okay? And then I'll just special summon out another copy into the exact same zone in attack mode, because it has to be attack mode. And then she will activate again, and then I'm gonna get another monster onto the field, and that monster is likely going to be Messenger Lotto. Uh, let's just put Messenger Lotto right here. And Messenger Lotto will activate, giving me my chateau so it is really bad for them to try to do anything and i still have my hoot kick for the next turn so i can still banish something or i can even go into tiaramisu and then just go wombo combo if i go into tiaramisu right here 
and then I push out and de detach to shuffle out cards, Ticket will activate and I'll summon out even more monsters. If I get out my uh, Pudding Sessor once again, I can link even further. It's just so much that you can push with this, and if you put out Chateau, the amount of damage you have is easily an OTK kind of push. So that is kind of the opening play and the follow-up after turn one. So what happens if you only open with the Anjali? If you only have the Anjali, you're forced to go in. Aside from not getting Ash Blossom Joy Spring, uh, that's what you really hope for, you can change up the combo depending on where you want to go and what monster you want to leave on the field that is indestructible. In my case, I probably want the Hoot Cake to be indestructible, so I'm going to activate Anjali and go straight into the Hoot Cake. I have two Hoot Cakes in hand, which is like, oh, thank God I don't have the third one. Even if you have the third one, then you'll be forced to go into the other girl, which is Pudding Sessor. So it's not even that bad if you open with all the Hoot Cakes. So I'm going to get the Hoot Cake in defense mode. You gotta put this one in defense, because if you don't put it in defense, you will uh, get killed, and then the card that you add from Ticket will be added back to hand, which is unfortunate. So this better be in defense mode. And then now that you have it in defense mode, you can banish this, and you're gonna summon out the Pudding Sessor. And we should put the Pudding Sessor over here. And Pudding Sessor will activate, and you're gonna get yourself the Messenger Lotto. And the Messenger Lotto will activate, and that's going to fetch you a Ticket. Now you can activate the ticket if you really want to, and then you can go ahead and link these two off, leaving the beast on the field, putting out the... Uh, where are you? There it is. Let's just start up here, pointing. So you have basically two indestructible monsters, uh, because this cannot not be destroyed by battle as long as you can shuffle a card back in. And this one is protected from spells and traps, or basically any sort of card effect that targets or destroys it. And this cannot be destroyed by battle, which makes it a little bit more annoying for your opponent, because if they try to whack your Madolce Sistar for damage, it's not going to be great. Uh, even if they go into a Boral Sword, you're not going to die at this point. So that's, I guess, kind of lovely as well. Even if they get a second attack on you, it is going to be painful. Not going to lie. Um, Regardless, this is like the board that you could probably set up if you have a really, really dead hand. Alright, now we're going to do a going second combo where we can either kill your opponent or board break them, depending on how far it goes. If you have everything here, this is like the most sacky opening. You can mix it up, but this is probably one of the more ideal hands. Where if your opponent sets up with the board, you can first off by giving them a Kaiju, and then uh, you can impermanence whatever problem card there is left. And then we're gonna have whatever that we have left right here. This is usually enough to go for a kill, especially when you open with Messenger Lotto. If you don't have Messenger Lotto, another level 4 is fine too. It's just not, a, I guess you lose additional damage and that's about it. So let's start off the combo with Pudding Sessor. You activate this, special summon this onto the field. And then she'll activate and getting us an Anjali. Special summoning that, tribute this on off. And then we're gonna get ourselves a Hoot Cake. Hoot Cake, we're going to banish this. Special summon out Messenger Lotto. Messenger Lotto will give us a search of the ticket. Ticket is key because you could get your uh, uh, additional monster out. Don't activate the ticket just yet in case there's still back row left on there and you just don't want to, to pop it. Say it's the Twin Twister. And it's very likely that a lot of people are mainly Twin Twisters now. Uh, what you're going to do now is you're going to normal summon Mewfoy and then you're going to special summon out the Messin Gelato in hand or whatever level 4 you have available. This is going to give you the access to Chateau. So depending if your opponent has more monsters or less monsters, you can change it up uh, depending on what they have. You can go for the kill or you can go with double board break. So you can go double Tiara and you can also go uh, single Tiara and enough damage to go for lethal. So here you're going to take the level 3s because they are not level 4 and you use them to go into Sistart. With Sistart, you now have an arrow pointing to the Messenger Lotto, which is good because then your ticket is now safe for play. So you can play the ticket now and that's going to be great. You can even get yourself an additional summon right now by just playing the Chateau, which I would not recommend because if you play the Chateau, you will lose all the monsters in your graveyard and then you're going to struggle because you can't use Tiaramisu's effect. So first, you would probably use up the, uh, the Pudding Sessor and the Messenger Lotto together and you get yourself your first Queen Bee and you're going to detach to spin multiple cards. It'd be nice to actually activate this right now, but it's not possible. You can spin two, target two of your cards and put it back into the deck. Uh, I'd probably take these two and put it back into the deck. So let's put them at the bottom for now. So now you spin two cards. They say you spin back the Kaiju because you gave him a Kaiju anyway. And that's going to activate the ticket. 
Ticket is now going to get ourselves a free special summon, a level 4 of some sort. Um, if you're going for damage, then you can go for... Um, you would have detached a message of Lotto instead, put that back in and special summon that back out. But in this case, I'm just going to summon out a Magellan. And if you're going to go for the kill, you just activate Chateau right here. And then there's 2k, 27, 19, and a 21. I think that is enough for lethal, so that would be game. But in case that's not enough, uh, and your opponent still has something that you want to answer, you overlay these two together, and you get yourself a second Tiaramisu. Now you can detach the Messenger Lotto and shuffle back these two. And once you do that, uh, this isn't going to activate anymore, but you have two, basically you have double queen, and now you can activate the Chateau for the additional damage, and you can just keep pushing, and you can set one card and then pass turn. 27-27, uh, that is 50... Uh, four plus a 2k so they are at 600 life so chipping off that 600 life while having a solemn strike they are kind of in a, in a weird situation where if they have an otk they can still potentially kill you um but if not you broke their board and most of the cards that you sent away they're not in the graveyard they're in the deck so deck synergy they are a little bit stunned as well so that's kind of the combos I want to showcase to you guys. If you guys enjoyed this deck profile, these combos, hit me up with a thumbs up, guys. Appreciate it. If you guys want to give me a little bit of a Christmas present, hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with the most recent stuff. And if you guys want the proxies, I know some of you guys are asking, hey, where'd you get these proxies? Uh, it's available on my Discord server. Check out the Discord server in the downloads uh, channel on my Discord server. You can find it in the second page of the link range to proxies where I just snuck in a pudding accessory in there as well. So if you guys want to play Medolce, you guys can also get access to that early. And uh, when the cards come out, just swap them out for the real card. And that's all I got for this video, guys. If you guys enjoy it, well, happy holidays. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. So proceed to my end phase. I end my turn with this board. Go ahead, your move. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV and I'll see you next time.